The Zoe primrose is frequently found by the edge of the road or a parking lot in dry, disturbed areas. Its large yellow flowers are striking and distinctive. Its flowers close up at midday, and it really doesn't like to compete with other vegetation. Drummond Phlox comes in a lot of colors. The scarlet is the most familiar, but different combinations of pink and peach and white and a deep pink are all possible and can be seen within the same population of phlox. This short, tough annual blooms from mid-March through April and sometimes into May. I love the range of colors that it comes in, and it's just a beautiful little roadside plant in the wild, but can also star in your garden. This cheerful little spot in my yard is occupied by fall obedient plant. It does bloom in the fall. This is almost the end of September. Uh, and it, I don't know if you can tell, but it is loaded with pollinators right now. There are bees, small butterflies, all kinds of things enjoying the flowers of the fall obedient plant. It does like a damper location, and this part of the yard actually is sort of a drainage way. Some people find this plant a little aggressive. I've never had any trouble with it and I actually wanted it to fill this area so it's done what I wanted it to do. It does spread slowly but the babies if they end up where you don't want them are also easy to pull out so you don't have to worry about planting this one I think as, as much as some people might lead you to believe it's actually a great plant. Let's see if we can get closer and still get that to focus on some of these flowers. It's not in pristine condition at this point, but I wanted to make sure and film this before its season is over. Mexican hat or upright prairie cone flower is a cheery, long-lived perennial that is really, really tough. It will just put up with all kinds of drought and abuse in the landscape. I've watched the same patch bloom by a particular roadside telephone pole for many years in a row. It comes in red, it comes in yellow, and blends of those two colors as well with a very long bloom season. This can be great in your garden as well. It will recede, but the babies are not too hard to pull out. Ruelia nudiflora is one of our wild Ruelias. There are quite a few in North Texas. This is the one that has all the flowers at the top of the plant, not tucked into the leaf axils like some of the others. This has been uh, showing up and volunteering in a friend's garden, and she likes it, but it is a little bit aggressive. She keeps having to pull out the extra ones. So this and other native Ruelias are a little bit better behaved than the imported Ruelia that we find at the big box stores, but they still can spread in your landscape and need to be controlled, particularly in a moist, shady area where conditions are just right for them. The thing about all Ruelias is that their seeds disperse explosively, so new plants can end up quite a distance away from the parent plants. Heartleaf Skullcap provides a really neat silvery blue-green foliage, very pretty, neat foliage uh, for a shade or part shade garden. It will also do okay in full sun. I've seen some patches doing fine in full sun. And it is covered with sort of a blue, purple blue flowers. Neat buds with a strange and interesting form are followed by these blue flowers up top. But even when it's not blooming, I really like the look of this gray green foliage. It uh, stays low and does not, um, 
uh, look spriggy or weird in its off season. I just think it makes kind of a nice ground cover even when it's not blooming. These were taken in October. This pretty vertical plant here in the shade of the herd gardens is a frostweed. It's very attractive to pollinators. It has special interest in the winter and it's one of those plants that bl blooms reliably in the shade in the fall. So it's very valuable for pollinators and to fill up those shady corners of your garden where it's difficult to get other things to grow. This is a young one. That clump will expand with time. Frostweed is a fall bloomer, reliable bloomer for shade. I've actually let it sort of take over this corner of my yard where almost nothing else will grow. And as I get close, this one is nearing the end of its bloom period. The stems of Rothsweed have these interesting green flaps of tissue running vertically down the stem between the leaves. Those are kind of an interesting field mark. Only a few other plants in North Texas have those. You're going to find this in uh, low, damp places, shaded woodlands. One of the most interesting things about frostweed is what it does in the winter. When you get a short, sharp, cold snap where the temperature drops abruptly, the stems will shatter, leaking out a uh, sap, and that sap will freeze overnight into amazing curly cues and thin curly sheets of ice. You'll hear people call these frost fairies or frost flowers sometimes. Even if it didn't have attractive flowers that bloom in the shade, frostweed would be worth planting for the pollinator value. It attracts so many different kinds of butterflies at a time of year when a, not a lot of things are blooming and there's not a lot of pollen and nectar available sometimes. So consider adding some frostweed to your landscape for the beautiful pollinators that it serves. In North Texas, frostweed is usually blooming in the fall just when the monarchs are making their southern migration back to Mexico for the winter. This butterfly is a great purple hair streak. 